Hi, Steve here. Welcome to this tutorial on our Greyhound Backbot. First of all, um, before you can start using this, you need to set it up, obviously, and then it will bet according to the settings that you've got. So what this uh, software is designed to do is to bid on the Greyhounds in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Great Britain, and Ireland. So you can pick over here, you can see, you can pick what countries you want. You can have just single country or multiple countries. It's entirely up to you. So the first thing you need to do is, uh, if we stop at the top row, is we have 20 tabs along here. At, these are our staking tabs, right? So automatically the bot comes with the first 10 already enabled. So if you're going to bet only a few tabs, you will need to go through and uh, enable the tabs you want. Um, I'm going to try doing just two tabs for the Greyhound, so consequently I go through here and delete uh, and enable the tabs that I don't want. So now I've only got tab one and tab two being enabled, so the staking in that will take place only on these two. Okay, so if we go back to settings, the next thing here we need to tick is auto reload, so this means that every half hour the races will automatically reload. So if there's um, time changes or that, they will be picked up in the auto reload. Show market is unticked. You don't need to show the market. The market will appear in this gray area here. But however, by showing the market, you use up more what we call um, API requests from Betfair. And this figure here um, normally travels between 1 and 0.5. If you have show the market, it jumps up to 20 to 30. So we don't need to have that tick. The bot doesn't need to see what's going on. So have that unticked. Next thing here is commissions. If you're only bidding UK, well, then you can put five in there. However, if you're using Australia and that, I suggest that you use eight. And it doesn't matter that you have eight in there and you're doing the UK. It just means the bot is allowing a little bit extra commission, so it will add to your profits. Okay, so that's all that needs to be done um, before we go over to the back one, back two, back three. Now, these three tabs here are completely separate little betting modules, if you like to call it. So, for example, if I just have a look at this one here, if I was going to bet Australia only, I would have Australia ticked and that's it. And if I went over here and clicked reload back, it would load only the Australian meetings in here now. Okay, so the market to bet, you can got the choice of win or place market. We suggest in the grey hands you stick to the winners. Sometimes there's not much liquidity in the place markets. The next one we have here is we can bet on the first eight favourites. Obviously in Australia we have eight greyhounds racing and same in New Zealand. In the UK predominantly it's just six, so you couldn't put the seventh favourite if you were betting on the UK or Ireland. The next thing here you'll see is Mexican wave. If you have that tick, what it means is the bets will go in order. So bet one will go on tab one, bet two will go on tab two, and then if you've got tab three ticked, it would go there. We go through all the tabs and then revert back to one. If you have Mexican weight unticked, it will always keep just betting on the first available tab. So if one's available, it will always place the bets on one. If one has a bet still waiting to be decided, then it would go to tab two. But as soon as bet one become, uh, tab one becomes available, the bet the next bet would go back into there. We prefer the Mexican wave. Here we've got the difference between the back and lay price. So if we could, if we put in here five, it means five ticks. So it means the gap between the back price and the lay price, if we've got five ticks, has to be very close. Um, the reason that we have that box there is for we only really want to be betting in races, obviously that are what we considered competitive as far as liquidity and betting goes. So the bigger the gap and the lay back, it means there's less and less money in, in that race or uh, specifically on that uh, dog. So that's why we have, uh, and we recommend usually keeping it around five if you are betting the first favourite. As you go out further to say the fourth or fifth favourite if you want to bet, then you could make that tick, lay tick thing uh, margin a little bit higher. 
the distance, the minimum distance of the races that you want to consider, you may only want to consider races 300 metres and up. In that case, you'd put 300. And the maximum distance, you would want to put whatever you want. I put 780. Minimum price now is what does the first favourite, if you're betting on the first favourite, have to be? And we find that generally um, three plus is where you want to be. And the maximum price, for example, we could put six. Not that you get many first favourites would be paying six. Now, the next one here, the minimum price of the first favourite and maximum price seems a little bit contradicted. Um, and it is if you're betting the first favourite. And you'll find if you have the first favourite selected there, you can't put anything in those boxes. So what you need to do is you need to go to the second favourite for a minute and then this boxes would become active. So we'd put in three here and uh, say five. Change that back to five up there. Now, why do we have this minimum price here and in here? Well, for example, if you're bidding, say, hey, like the second favourite, you may you may want to put in here the minimum price of the first favourite has to be three and five, meaning if the race has an odds on or a short priced favourite, you may not want the bet to go on. So that's what this price point's about. But of course, if you're bidding the first favourite, then um, obviously it's not going to come into play. But you still need numbers in these boxes, otherwise the bets won't go on. Time to bet, pre-play, always pre-play. Don't um, um, and we're betting five seconds before the race starts. Minimum amount matched. If you're doing Australia, then we suggest at least 2,000. Or if you're in pounds, at least 1,000. If you're in Australian dollars, 2,000. Profit delta is how much per losing bet. If we have a losing bet, do we want the software to add a little bit on for the next bet? As an extra profit so that means if we have 10 losing bets in a row we're not just trying to win our profit our race target which we'll talk about soon but we want to maybe add another you know two percent or three percent in which case say this is actually a figure value so we might want to put in 10 so for every losing bet the software will add 10 to the next target it just means after 10 bets, instead of just winning your race target, you're winning a little bit extra profit. But you can leave it at naught, and I, I tend to leave it at naught. Minimum runners, if you're doing Australia, probably six. Maximum, of course, is eight. If you're doing in the UK, well, you can obviously um, change the numbers there. Now, the next bit I want to talk about is the staking bit here. Okay, so this area here is the staking area. So if we are using level betting, for example, go down here. If we click on level betting, you can see that this is grayed out. So we don't have a target profit. and We don't have a profit delta that's grayed out as well. So what we, we might put in here is we might put in 0 0.50. So this means that we're going to be betting only level stake and we want to try and that are we are staking 50p or 50 cents per bet. So what happens is the stop profit doesn't come into effect, which we'll talk about shortly, and the stop loss of each tab and that these are in play. So if we untick them, for example, untick these ones, it means that as soon as the profit would reach, say, five, if we had five in there, the net tab would stop. So tab one would stop if it got to five pound or five dollars profit. And if all tabs got to, say, we put in 10, then they would stop. But if we don't want that, we just have them ticked. And so if we make a profit up to five on the first tab or the second tab, it will just continue betting because we've ticked it to continue betting. Okay, so that is what happens here. This one down here, stop loss staking tab, this does not come into effect if you have level staking. And we'll talk about uh, this in a minute. Next one, distribute all losses among enabled tabs means if we have a loss, it doesn't, if we have that ticked, 
we have a loss in tab one, then it'll be split between tab one and two. Or if we have five tabs open, it would split the loss between the five tabs. So not no one tab is carrying the whole losses. But once again, because we're level staking, this distribute losses does not come into effect. Okay, so that, that is not used if we're going to use level staking. So level staking is pretty straightforward. Now, if we were to look at, uh, for example, we untick level staking, and now we want to use our progressive staking, we look here and we see that um, stop at a profit per raise. Okay, how much do we want to make per race? In this case, I've just put in 0 0.1. One, so that's 10p, 10 cents, whatever your currency is for your uh, Betfair account. And uh, tick to continue. So if we get that profit for a race, we want to continue. Once again, the profit tabs and profit all tabs, if we have them ticked here, it's immaterial what figure we have there because it will do, once it reaches that target, it will just keep spending again. Level staking, we've discussed, so we don't tick that. Now, this is an important part here, this yellow box here. This is the stop loss. So we have to put a number in here that we will continue trying to get a profit until we reach this figure. So if I put in four, for example, it will continue to try and get a profit on each tab, each individual tab, up until the stop loss gets to four. So if we can't make a profit before we get to four, um, you know, sorry, if we can't, if we cannot make a profit in the next bet, it's, it's going to be a total of over four outlay in total, then the bet won't get placed and the system will restart again trying to get our 10p or 10 cent target. But that's because we have continued and restart or we can have continue and no restart, but don't click that because if you click that, then it will continue to try and recover the losses regardless of the amount you've put in there, and we don't want that. Or don't continue. That means if we go there and we can't, and we reach our stop loss, we have don't continue, the bot will not bet any more for that tab. So tab one might get breached, tab two might still be active. And then if we have distribute all losses, it does what I said before, Every time there's a loss, it will distribute it amongst the open, um, you know, the tabs that are enabled. So if you've got five tabs, the loss will be split five ways. If you have four tabs, the loss will be split four ways. So it just means that one tab is not building up faster than the others. The next below here, we have, we can see the three boxes. So US races, uh, UK races, Australian races. Um, the Australian races includes Australia and New Zealand, the UK races are UK and Ireland, and then the trap or box the numbers. In Australia, they're called boxes. In the UK, they're called traps. Okay, so for example, because we've got Australia ticked, we would go to the Australian races, and then we can tick the races that we want to bet on. <laughs> we might want to bet on maidens. If that was the case, we would leave the maidens blank. And we would bet on these other races. Okay, so once they're ticked, that means that race is, is eligible for betting on. We go to the trap box and we may want to bet on two, three, four, five, six, and seven, for example. So in Australia, you've got 10. You've only got eight boxes, but we but they run two reserve dogs. So if the reserves get a start, they would be number nine and number ten. Okay, so once we've done that, we've set all this up, then we can go ahead and click start. And that will make back one active. Okay, so in that case, we are good to go. So if we click start, now tab one, our uh, back one will start betting. To the instructions that we've just laid out for us and then we go into tab two we want to if we want more bets and then we go through the same procedure with the, the um, criteria that we want you can have like back one back two can be level staking back one can be progressive staking it um, each back one back two and back three each module 
is a separate staking uh, and separate selection process. Okay, the only things that remain the same is obviously the amount of tabs that are enabled can't be changed and the commission uh, can't be changed. Okay, so that is how you set it up. And from there, then we have our results page. And as this is a fresh bot, there's no things in it. Um, our log, which is very important, that tells us what's happening at the time. So if a race is not bet, any time you can click on log and have a look, and it may tell you that the trap's not qualified or there wasn't enough money in the pool or or um, the type of race was not the race, uh, not one that's been selected. And then if we go and click on tab one, for example, this one here, distributed losses. So this tells us at any one stage, back one, back two, or back three, how much loss is being carried in that tab. So if we've had a few losing bets, tab one will be carrying some losses, tab two will be carrying some losses, etc. And over here, it tells us the profit that tab that back one's been making, the profit that back two's been making, the profit that back three's been making for this tab only. Okay, and then same for tab two, and regardless of how many tabs you've got, each will have its own summary so you can see how each one's going. Okay, so basically once you've started once you've started a tab like we've got here, that's active. And um, all you have to do is when you finish racing for the day, if you're just using it on your computer, it's push stop and make sure you push stop on each of the tabs back one, back two, back three, before you close the bot. And then when you open the bot the next day, all the settings and all the staking is retained and it um, just continues where it left off from. So that's the tutorial on how the Greyhound back bot works. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we hope that you see some merit in this software. It's a great way to follow the dogs, a lot of fun, and hopefully make uh, some reasonable profit. On behalf of Michael and myself, Steve, thanks for watching this tutorial on Greyhound Bot. Thank you.